In a previous video, I'd talked about terraces, and I made the comment about what planters work out for our farm, what planters don't, and why. And actually, a guy uh, I, I talked to on on the comments, and he said, "You ought to make a video explain terraces." He said, It'd "Be a really good video." So it's raining again outside today, and so I thought I would actually sit in the office, do a little paperwork, and make a, a video that hopefully explained a little bit about some of our uh, terrace systems because if you've watched any of my videos you notice that we have a lot of terraces in the background so i did i went to google earth and this is a a, a picture of one of our farms this is a uh, all around 100 acres here um, and you'll notice these uh, green lines that go out around these are uh, terraces these particular ones are uh, narrow base terraces which means you have a you know an intake on the front side and then you have uh, basically it's just a triangle of dirt and the slope of your land would be like this so this is grass and this is grass now the contractor in me that builds these terraces would say that they're more of an engineered structure to ensure a surface water runoff um, containment versus just uh, what farmers refer to them as a terrace. The reason we do these is because of erosion. When we uh, bought this farm, there was a dam about right here, and there was a fence, and this was a, a separated field from this one. We bought all the neighboring farms and combined them together over the years. Now, because the way this was all laid out, there was a big, giant rut that went through and came out down here. And as you might notice in the uh, picture here, that there is a uh, road tube down here at the bottom of the hill. And that's uh, about a, I think about a 40-inch tube, maybe 42-inch tube that goes under the road. And then you have a, a creek that goes on out right off the page. And what you want to do by putting in terraces, or the reason I should say that you put in terraces, is you want to build an engineered structure that lays the contours of the land that keeps runoff from eroding your land. And in our area, um, I think pretty much statewide, you're looking at about a target rate loss of topsoil, which is about three to four ton an acre. And three or four ton acres, literally on one acre, is about as, it's around a couple millimeters. I mean, it's just nothing, just a film of dirt runoff. And with no-till and other good farming practices, you can replenish that three or four ton an acre per year. So the idea is you don't lose any soil. Now, in, in places like this map, prior to Terrace and Tower, you're probably losing 10 tons an acre or more. I mean, just absolute gullies. Uh, where our area is at, and that's southwest Iowa, prehistorically there was three glaciers and they kind of petered out right where we're at. And so we left a lot of some of the topsoil off the glaciers that pushed down here. But our topsoil is much more layered. So we might have, you know, topsoil here, and you might have a clay layer, and you might have a shale layer. You know, depends where you're at as what the thickness of each. So the idea of these. They stop erosion, and then you follow your land topography, which if you look at a topographical map, you can see that it follows land profile contours. So when you lay all these out, this would be the high point of your ridge. So your, your water, this would be your high, so we'll call that the age. So your water is actually running this way, kind of like this way. There's a road ditch there, so it's probably sloped towards it to a certain degree. You might notice these terraces go the other way. That's because this water is running this way. And our, our structures here, terraces, are usually built on four and five foot increments of height. So if this is zero, you need to find where your four foot of drop would be. So there's probably an intake right in here. Probably another intake right in here. Another intake right in here. You can kind of see the bow in the terrace. And this would be zero. So when you shoot grid, you know, you, you got to basically your, your land's sloping 
this way towards this intake. You know, there might be a hilly come up and over, and it slopes this way. So slope, you know, it's towards the intake. Water's running towards them. Now, when it rains, we want to see a 24-hour runoff. And that's why we ducked our tile. That's why proper tile ducting. So we'll start out down here on this particular farm. We started out with 12-inch mains, went up to where it branches, tree branches, you know, get smaller and smaller. And time we end up up here at our very top intake, which is the top of our main. And for that fact, all intakes are hooked to 4-inch. And the reason we do that is because fast-moving water pulls sediment. So if you're completely saturated, and again, these structures are built for 4-inch, you know, containment. So if you had that three or four inch rain and it filled it up, so here's a high spot and there's where zero's at out there at the end of the terrace, technically we would have a pool of water that would probably, you know, be from there to there. That'd be our pool of water. And since this takes 24 hours to drain that pool, that terrace holds that water for 24, or holds up 24 hours, or that's a containment amount, four inches rain in 24 hours. And it's gonna allow all your sediment to just drop. It's not pulling sediment, you know, it's not pulling it in. And that'll retain uh, basically no erosion. Um, so your water should be really clean coming out and not full of sediment. And there are guys that don't duck things properly, which causes issues. So. Yeah, you know, that's the contractor. I mean, knowing how to build the structure to proper specs that makes sure that it doesn't cause the sediment uh, to be pulled. Knowing how to duct your tile, proper ducting, just like HVAC ducting in your house. So then you skip down to the next terrace, and it starts out over here at, at zero. And obviously ends at zero. And the ways I see zero is because that's going to be the same height. This to this is the same height. And you find your ridge points. So there's probably a high. Well, that's probably a low down here. Probably you can see the terrace thicker. So it's going to be a an intake. Looks like there's an intake there. You can see a little erosion intake. See a little erosion intake. You know, and this just rolls the topography up and down the hills. Now, when you lay your top terrace in, you want to stand about six feet off your ridge. So if that's your very highest point of your ridge is right here, my very top intake would be about six feet lower than that high point. So that's where I lay my top terrace in. Again, zero to zero means that's the same height. So that'd be about four feet down. For my structure, is about four feet. And when you measure a triangle like this, you measure at three foot of thickness. Wherever this triangle is three feet thick, it's gonna be four feet tall. So that's on the front side, measured on the front side, but here's the intake. Your back slope can be much higher. That's a two to one slope. And this is pretty much the only terrace. So there are other types of terraces out there, such as uh, what they call wide base grass back slope, which is um, maybe a I screwed it up here. Maybe you got an intake out in the field like this, and you got a really long farmable. So this is farmable, and this is grass like this. Those aren't used much anymore because the planter relationship between here and here has to match the intake spacings. Most are set on 30 feet, some are set on 26 right or wide. It doesn't work when you go to 40 foot planters. Uh, other places use contour terraces which follow exact contours and they may only drop a tenth of an inch of grade and then they'll run to a waterway. So instead of an outlet, they're designed to run to a waterway. They're a much shorter profile terrace and versus this because they're not made to house the water for 24 hours to run off without pipe. They're made just to slowly guide the water and just fully release down a waterway. So that's your different basic different types of terraces. And there are a couple others that people use. But uh, yeah, when you lay these out, you start on that ridge. We set it here. It's zero and zero. So if you look across this thing, if you're standing in the field, even though your your land may go like this, you know, your terrace is going to look like that when you get, you know, when you'll stand back and look at it across the field. 
Again, these are an engineered structure with proper ducting. That's how we control erosion. And we also gain farmability, meaning we can farm around here. Then how we start spacing them out is we pick the steepest part of the farm, which looked like the steepest part of the farm is right here because this is about where it's narrowest. And we go 120 feet apart. And we actually go 135 because of the distance or the thickness of the terrace is about 15 feet when you do two to ones on these. Actually 16 feet. So again, you got zero out, zero out, and you probably got a zero out. So 120 uh, feet multiples apart. And then it goes on down the page. You know, there's the steepest part of the farm right there. I can find it. Um, steepest part of the farm was probably like right in there. And then for this last terrace, it appears it was like right in there. Or possibly right in here. No. So there's probably an intake here, it looks like. And there's a low spot in the terrace abode, probably right in there. Intake, anyway, 20 some intakes down here. So, when you space this at 120 feet apart, now here's where I was talking about, I'm going to change over to a red pen. This is where I was talking about when you run into some issues with a, plant, with a planter. With a 40 foot wide planter, which is 16 rows, you do maybe one swipe here and maybe two here. And then you're at 120 feet, you've hit. With a 12 row, you would have done two and two swipes, two swipes, two swipes, and you hit in the center. That's the right way, because then I can go around this terrace, you know, twice, and go around this terrace twice, and I'll be out here in the center. Because these things here, like, where this terrace, you know, this ground's going to be flatter in here. So when you fill this in, these are called point rows back and forth. So if you had a 16-row planter, and I'd only run around here one time, when I get down these point rows, essentially I'm turning that combine in 40 feet of end row spacing. In other words, there's not much room to turn around in. If I had a 12 row, I'd have 60 feet here now. And it would eliminate some of my point rows because it would keep my rows longer. So 12 row or 6 row actually works better for 120 foot multiples than a 16 row does. Um, another issue is like here's a road, here's a road ditch. See, we got these end rows here. Go along. And like down here, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to turn around to do some of these rows in here. So you got 40 feet. Well, 40 feet with a combine, you pull out, you do a three-point turn, you come back in. It's a pain in the butt. With 60 feet, you can come out, flip around, right back in. It makes farming a lot nicer. Not to mention, with the 60 feet, you're able to keep these rows longer and straighter. So, and again, same deal here. All these rows are coming like this, and they're tying into these end rows. Luckily, I was able, because there's enough slope between the ridge here and here, I was able to put, even with a 16-row planter, you can go 32 or whatever, and you can um, find a way to uh, turn around. Now, you may not ask, well, why didn't I just make two swipes of 16 here and just one here? Well, and then at that point, you'd end up with less rows here, you know? Inevitably, because your multiples are of, of 120 are uneven, meaning 3, versus even, meaning 4, so 2 and 2 puts you center. 2 and 1 puts you offset. So hopefully that explains why I was talking about planters and why the 12 rows actually work better, or even a 6 row works better for our farm. And for that fact, even an 8 row would, because at least you could do your 24 end rows in places. But that's why for our particular farm, it actually works uh, better to have that uh, narrower planter. Now, uh, 16 row, obviously we like our 8 row corn heads. So I'll probably, uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to go 8 row or uh, 12 or 6 row head, 12 row planter. Probably should just run a 12 row head. I don't know. The problem with 12 row heads is just getting hauled away from it. It's just a lot of corn coming in there. And I'll weigh in more on that on a video um, in the future when I get back to combining here if this damn rain quit. And that sounds like next week we're going to have a good week. So 
keep this video in mind as I'm talking about that. Just wanted to explain terraces for today. If there's some sort of a question on here, maybe I can answer. Uh, fire away in the comments below. Appreciate all the uh, viewers and all the comments I do get. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, hopefully this shines a little bit of light on on uh, why we farm like we do in our geographical area. In that video, but I was going to add a little bit to it here before I do. And uh, I was looking at a new 1631 uh, with the hydraulic down for us. Our, our current one's a pneumatic, which I would probably prefer to buy the hydraulic. So what they do when they need a horsepower requirement... Is have a configurator with your John Deere, so it's 3115, 1795, and he figured it going seven and a half mile an hour, and then you, you put in the hills and all your stuff. So coming up with the estimated, that's engine horsepower, 316, and then your, your uh, what the planter weighs, which is insanity, 28,000 pounds, it's crazy. Um, and then 12,000 pounds of draw bar load, God, no wonder it burns tires off going down the road, but uh, your, draw, your uh, hydraulic requirements. And uh, 316 engine horsepower. And so you go to your uh, 8R family series of tractors here. So probably, I mean, 8400R is going to play with it, but uh, uh, 8345R would handle that planter. And you can look up the PTO horsepower. 8345R is ranking up there. Now, ironically, if anybody wants any useless information, you have to go down to an 8295R to get a 1300 series front axle now and the Cat 3 draw bar. The 8345R, uh, it, the 8320R is where they cut off the 1300 series axle no longer. It's only 1500 ILS. And then you can go into the 8345R, or uh, I should say up to the 8345R with a 540 PTO shaft. Uh, once you jump to the 370s and 400s, then you're... you're um, gonna be 1,000 PTO only, so 345 is your cutoff on your PTO, 8295R is your cutoff on a Cat 3 draw bar and uh, 1300 series mechanical front. I don't particularly like that, I suppose they figured the extra horsepower is tearing up the front ends, but I don't really like how they kind of force you to buy that bigger, higher horsepower um, tractor for the need for your planter, but same thing, you gotta start buying all the bigger, higher horsepower crap, and I don't like the so 345, you know, if you want to run a Dismo or something on it, you know, now you got a heavier front axle tractor, and you got to have the, you know, for your 540 PTO. So, say I want my 8400R, I want to stick a Dismo on it. Well, I can't even do 